Hey all friends and welcome to the channel, Bob here and this is uh, going to be, this is a video, this is like pre-recorded footage so it's a bit different to what I normally do. I, I'm not going to say it's going to be any less waffly or, or incoherent so if you're one of the one or two people who have ever moaned about that kind of thing, switch off now because you probably won't like this video either. Um, but this video is just going to be like a quick review, I'm approaching level 20 so this video is just going to be a quick review of my time playing Dungeons and Dragons online so far as, as I approach my the end of my first life um, and I would say overall I've loved it and I it was only the other day that I kind of realized why that was um, I'm not sure about anyone else but when I've played games in the past for instance it's like single player role-playing games so like Dragon Age um, whatever it may be Witcher 3 you know all that kind of stuff um, I love them. I love those story-driven um, games. But when I, when I then played games like, for example, uh, what should we say? Not Destiny. I didn't play Destiny. But those kind of always online games. I used to think to myself, wouldn't it be great if Dragon Dragon this this Dragon Age original game was an all, like an always online game? I know they call them services now, but it was an, it was an always online game as well. So you had the great single player experience story experience but it was married with an online the online service features that you get and i think this game is kind of the closest that i've come to um, with regards to that um as you know you know i played project gorgon um everquest project 1999 and some other mmos and they've all got their plus points but the plus point for this is that i think it's the closest i've come across to a single player game uh, a single player role playing game that's got a single player kind of quality narratives and quests uh, uh, coupled with like a like a the online like an MMO service you know and, and the things that come with that so constant updates you know new content um, you know the fact that you can see other players around the get around the world which makes it feel online if that's the kind of thing that you're into now I know a lot of people will say well that's not the point it's supposed to be an online game D&D is a is a um, you know a party-based social experience, and I don't disagree with that. But not all RPGs are. You know, there's a reason that uh, single-player CRPGs are so so popular. You know, and, and this marries the two together. So I think that's why I've enjoyed it so much. Is that um, I've been running around doing the, these adventures that you can see right now uh, that feel very much story-driven single-player RPG um, games but then when you come out of the adventures and you're all, and you've then got the benefits of the MMO um, side of you know side of, of, of the game the mechanics um, you know the the constant um, like class and character progression um, the, the, the ability to kind of replay uh, adventures on different difficulty levels. Um, and everything else, all the services that you get in an MMO that you don't get in a single player CRPG. And that's the thing I've always found quite strange that people don't seem to understand. Like uh, with EverQuest, like P99 for example, that's the game that I've played the most on the channel. And you always get people saying, well I don't understand why you're playing it single player. So that's not how it's meant to be played. Well, it's meant, these games are meant to be played how you want to play them. Um, and I think that you can play them... Um, yeah, in, in, in solo and uh, in a group, you know, it's because these games offer something that single player CRPG, CRPGs don't offer. So this offers something that Dragon Age doesn't offer um, from its MMO mechanics, you know, um, uh, Witcher 3, you know, P99 offers stuff that, you know, the Witcher 3, uh, Planescape, Baldur's Gate, whatever you, you care to think of. Um, you know, the, 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 there are just certain, certain there, there, there are a lot of mechanics involved in an MMO that you just don't get in a single player game. Um, and I think that's why people enjoy playing MMORPGs um, on their own, you know, because you, because you, yeah, I mean, you know, quite often in single player RPGs, sorry, in, in MMOs, they're a lot more grindier. Um, the writing and the stories and the quests and everything are not always as good as a single player RPG. But there are benefits to playing it, playing them, even if you're playing them on your own. And this is and this is and this is the perfect marriage I found so far 
uh, when I've been going through some of these quests, um, I've really felt like I'm playing a, a very good single single player RPG. And when I come out of them, I've got all the benefits of, of what a, an MMO or an online service, as they call them, um, you know, has to offer. And I think that's fine. You know, I, I don't see any problem in that um, at all. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. And I would say that if you're a lot of lot, but people, when I play different RPGs, people always say to me, you're a bit like me. I'm kind of looking for this, um, I'm looking for this kind of like perfect RPG, whether it's an MMO or a single player game. But I don't seem to be able to find it. You know, the, I've I've played games and I've really enjoyed them, but I've you know I've drifted away from them to something else. They've just there was just something that's not kept me there long term, and that is something that I've felt as well. As you know, you know if you I mean I enjoy playing the single player games. You know, and uh, sorry, the, I, I enjoy playing the different old MMOs or the the new old MMOs. If you you know. Um, the, the more modern MMOs that are trying to be a bit retro I enjoy playing them and showing them to you um, but I think the fact that I do move between them and try different ones I think it's because I haven't yet found one that offers me exactly what I'm looking for and I'm not saying that DDO is that game although I've played it solidly now for two weeks I haven't played anything else um, so that might give you an idea of, of how much I'm enjoying it. And I'm looking for, and, and like, like to get to level 20, we let level, 20, level 20 is a cap, but it's not the cap. It's not the ultimate cap. Um, but getting to level 20, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I've still got tons of quests and content that I haven't done that I'm looking forward to going through. I'm looking forward to starting the game again and going through the content I haven't played yet. And also playing a different class, because like when I, I'm not sure if, I mean, if you, if you've seen the other videos, you'll know what reincarnation is. But the game has something called reincarnation, where you, you reincarnate your level 20 or level 30 character. Um, they go back to level 1, but they get a benefit based on what you what reincarnation you choose to do. So I'm playing a Warforged, um, so I can do a racial reincarnation, um, which means I'll get a racial bonus. So, it, so like for long-term character progression, it kind of gives you a reason just to play for all the races, just to get those character, uh, to get those bonuses. So when, when you reincarnate and go to level one, your new level one character, it's the same kind of, I guess it's like a, I guess it's what it is, a reincarnation. You're reincarnated and you start at level one again, but you, your, character, your new character has a bonus. So over a period of time, you know, you build up these bonuses and uh, yeah, and your character becomes just your new character becomes more powerful through these through these bonuses and you can do racial ones all the races have got the different bonuses reincarnation bonuses you've got class ones you've got epic ones when you go to level 30 and there's some others as well that i can't quite remember at the moment so yeah there's also like a really interesting long-term goal um for your characters and it also means that you'll try you'll try stuff you may not necessarily try because you'll take it to 20 i mean i'm i was kind of thinking about going to 30 and doing an epic reincarnation but i'm not really enjoying the artificer enough to do that so what i'll do is i'll reincarnate at 20 play a new class um yeah and then see and then if i like that class if i'm really enjoying it i'll take that to 30 do an epic reincarnation and then when you get to 20 you can then do a, a non-epic one <laughs> um yeah so you get the benefit of two your, your new your new reincarnated character gets the benefit of two bonuses um the one the epic one from 30 to 20 and then you can go from 20 to one you know so you get you get a couple of bonuses so yeah you know i mean it's it's just been it's been a, a great ride and i think that overall the game has been um closer to what my ideal game would be i think a marriage of mmo rpg and story driven single player rpg i'm not saying all the all the quests are amazing or well written or whatever but the majority of them are written um and the story is told well enough that you know i've, I've been quite happy with it the i can't believe i know that dm is a very much a D&D thing. I think I mentioned it before, but I can't believe that no other MMO has has nicked the idea of having a, a DM talk you through the adventure because that makes a huge difference. It really feels like you're, 
you're in a story and you're part of a narrative. Uh, yeah. And I'm surprised that no other MMOs have included that because I do think it seems... Uh, yeah, I do think it is uh, very interesting. But yeah, overall, uh, my experiences have been very good and I'm looking forward to starting again, doing some different... Um, as a different class and a different race, probably. You know, so... So the reincarnation mechanic for your character development kind of allows you to try different things without being kind of stuck in in that. You know, if you try a you know a cleric and you're not enjoying it, you know that much at level twenty you can reincarnate, you get a bonus, and you can you can play something else. For me, <laughs> as you know, as being a terrible person with terrible auditus, um, for me it's a great mechanic because it means that I can kind of try everything you know all in one character it's uh yeah it's really really interesting but yeah but so far i've really enjoyed it um i'm not sure if i've explained exactly you know particularly well uh why i enjoy it but i think the overall feeling is it's a marriage of good single player rpg story driven narratives and you know the sort of mechanics you get in an mmo that we uh, that we all like um yeah and that has really been it that has been it this video is about to end i think maybe oh it repeats itself that's quite good so i you know <laughs> i'm not particularly I'm, I'm not particularly good at this um narrating over pre-recorded footage but it's something that i kind of do want to do a bit more um the area that you can see here before I go into the adventure is an area called the Cogs. So it's, it's not just about someone giving you a quest and you go into a like a, an instanced area. You know, the game does have open areas you can explore. And as you can see on the right hand side, each area does have some achievements that you can that you get experience for. Now, that's the other thing that I really like about the game. I'm always getting experience for stuff I don't even know what I'm getting it for. It'll pop up and say, you've got a thousand experience for this. Oh, great, you know. Um, so the game's always rewarding you as well, which is something that I um, I really like. I will say, from a negatives point of view, I will say that um, sometimes I've died, uh, I've died at the end of a quest and it's a, and it's been like a one shot thing that feels a bit cheap, um, and I'm I'm pretty sure that like new players, for example, um, you know maybe that's where they they reel you in to spend money to buy like a resurrection. So, you, so, so there are some quests where you if you die and you release back to your spawn point, it resets it, so you have to start again. Um, and I've had a couple of cheap ones at the end of, of, of those specific types of quests. Um, I'm, I think I'm right. I have released and come back into it, and the quest has reset. I'm not sure if I did something wrong. I don't. I didn't change the difficulty or anything, or or choose to reset the quest, which you can do. It just reset it for me, so that can be a bit frustrating. Um, yeah. So the the shop is not stuffed down your face, but there are a couple of things a couple of times where it felt a bit cynical you know where I was uh, um, not encouraged but I was thinking to myself ah oh, I'd rather just pay to resurrect here because otherwise I've got to go through all of that again you know and it wasn't I didn't enjoy it enough to go through it a second time but you know what it's like you know you want your character to, to progress you don't want to keep repeating I don't want repeating stuff if I feel like I'm making progress, but repeating stuff over and over is a bit, yeah, uh, can be a bit frustrating. It was, it was the fact that it was like a one shot, and I didn't really feel like I could avoid it in any way. Uh, so that's a, a bit of a, a downer. Um, as I've gone on, I've found that a, many of the high level quests that I've done, the high, I say high level, the high level ones that I've done. They seem to have t they seem to have eased up on the traps. So some of the early ones, you, you walk along ten yards in a dungeon trap, ten yards trap, ten yards trap. It's like oh for God's sake! Particularly if you're doing it on high difficulty where the, tra the traps kind of one shot you. But what I've noticed as I've gone higher, um, higher level is that they seem generally seem to replace the traps with just higher level harder mobs. Um, and I found that um, like this is the, 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 this is like the Sharn expansion pack, and I've kind of found that I've been able unable to do the quests on 
uh, the elite difficulty because the mobs have just got so many hit points um, and there's a lot more of them as well. So like this particular example here, if this was done on elite, because um, I tried one on elite and there were just like literally like 50 mobs. I was thinking, what the hell? <laughs> Maybe for a sorcerer or a warlock or wizard, you can just nuke those down. But as primarily a single target DPS character, you know, it was taking for a taking forever, and the mobs had tons of hit points. And I went down to hard, and you know, the mob density went to like less than half. So on elite, things really ramped up, and generally things have been tougher. Like even on hard, like I'm level nineteen. This is a hard quest, um, which makes it on the on the selection screen anyway. It says it's a, it goes up to level seventeen. Yeah, but even here, like the mobs got a lot more hit points, um, just harder to kill. You get a lot more of those hero mobs that that can be quite dangerous. But I found the levering process, even as a first life character, like you know, fairly uh, fairly smooth. You know, no real issues. There's enough content there. So that if you come across a quest that's just ridiculous and your character can't do it, you know, you can find something else to do. Well, one tip I would make is that don't, like, when I was about level 10-ish, um, there were some quests that I was having difficulty doing on Elite difficulty, but because I'd done all the other quests up to that point on Elite, I stubbornly spent, like, a day once trying to do two quests on Elite rather than just knocking the difficulty down, and that wasted quite a lot of time. Uh, it doesn't matter I think it's good to push yourself you know but it got to a point there were just things I couldn't do traps generally so I knocked it down in the end so don't get caught up in trying to do everything on elite because you've seen me do it or someone else do it you know it's uh yeah because that will just frustrate you so I've kind of learned to I'll try a quest uh, and if the first encounter is a swarm of 20 mobs on elite that are taking me forever to kill, I'll reset the quest and just do it again on, on hard, essentially. So so that's it. That's all I've got to say. Um, so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. It It's the first MMORPG that, that marriages... I know Warcraft has got some... is, is quest-driven. It's got a lot of quests. But for me, I don't know if it's the D&D &D setting, but for me personally, this is the first game that's married, that's kind of combined the single-player experience, RPG experience with a with a an mmo feel so yeah i'm loving it it's not perfect it's got some issues um but so far not too many and most of the issues i've come across are kind of in my own making <laughs> my own stubbornness but yeah anyway that's it thanks for watching and i'll speak to you again soon